Hey everyone, nostalgia is a great thing, so I'm sure you can imagine how it must have felt when I saw this HD5770 pop up for sale on CEX here in the UK for only a tenner. So we're going to be testing this in some games with the Nimez modded drivers to see if they can keep this 14 year old graphics card relevant today. Spoiler alert, kind of. Before that though, AMD launched the HD5770 almost 14 years ago now, October 13th, 2009 to be exact. At 159 US dollars, around 220 US dollars today at the time of writing, this came a few weeks after the launch of the HD5800 series. The 5770 is effectively a 5870 cut in half, half the core count at 800 versus 1600 on the 5870 with the texture mapping unit and ROP count cut in half as well. Memory capacity and bus width have also been cut down to 1 gigabyte of GDDR5 and 128 bits wide respectively, but for games at the time this was still plenty. Otherwise, the 5770 has the same specs as its bigger sibling, a core clock of 850 MHz with the GDDR5 running at 1200, which, due to how GDDR5 memory works, is effectively 4800 megatransfers. The HD 5770 can still run a lot of modern games, well, theoretically at least, as it supports DirectX 11. What will stop it though is driver support being officially dropped back in March 2016. This is where the Nimez modded drivers come in, which can potentially vastly improve performance on no longer supported graphics cards. The performance of AMD's R9 series in Halo Infinite springs to mind. Check out a video on the R9 380 by Random Gaming NHD up there, or linked in the description down below to see that. So, this was my first ever graphics card. Well, first I bought on its own at least. So it'll be nice to see just how it does over a decade after I first owned one. The benchmark system specs are on screen now if you want to pause and read. They're also in the description down below as well, if you need to use a screen reader. But yeah, enough chat, let's get straight into the benchmarks. CSGO runs far better than I expected it to. Seeing that, I suppose I didn't really know what to expect from the game. It initially launched in 2012, three years after the 5770, but it's a relatively easy game to run. I did initially try 1080p, but decided to go with 1600 by 900 instead. I can't remember why exactly, but that's just what I did. Medium settings are being used here as well, with 16x anisotropic filtering and shader, shader, shader detail set to low. I normally test a few different maps and bot matches, and Mirage is first up. The 5770 is doing great here. Around the mid 80s to well over 100 FPS is the norm throughout. It often also gets close to and over 150 frames per second when there isn't much going on around you. I can notice a few minor hitches, but these are barely noticeable. Anubis, which is one of the harder to run maps, is performing surprisingly well as well. It normally runs pretty badly in my videos, but with the kind of hardware I normally test, a 5770 pretty much blows them out of the water. I can see some minor hitches at points throughout and it's dipping to around the low 50s FPS wise, with some minor stuttering here too. Otherwise, the 5770 is doing around 60 to 90 FPS throughout. I'm seeing the best performance out of all of the maps I test in the overpass map. The HD 5770 is doing around 90 to well over 100 FPS throughout, a few minor hitches at points being the only other issue. The 5770 shows itself to be an excellent card for CSGO, with average 1% and 0.1% low figures of 106.3, 45.6 and 33.6 FPS respectively. The settings can always be turned right down for a completely smooth experience though. Crisis Remastered needs a bit of a workaround to even start. The Vulcan runtime is required, as the game uses that for its ray tracing even if you're not using that, or just using a card that doesn't even support ray tracing. The HD 5770's drivers don't install the Vulkan runtime as it doesn't support Vulkan, but you can download and install the runtime manually. At a custom resolution of 848x480 and with the lowest settings, 
the 5778 isn't having a very nice time. I'm seeing noticeable stuttering throughout, which isn't terrible to be truthful, but it is noticeable. The frame rate is surprisingly good though. Throughout the test, we're seeing anywhere from the low 50s up to near 100 FPS, but the stuttering pretty much cancels out how good the frame rate is. The HD 5770 would probably be better off in the original version of Crisis from 2007. The original will run and look better too with the settings you would be able to use, over what the 5770 can manage in the remaster. I was seeing average 1% and 0.1% lows of 73.7, 17.1 and 13.2 FPS respectively here. Fortnite runs reasonably well too. I'm being a bit ambitious with the settings though. If I were to rerun the tests, I'd probably turn down the textures and meshes from high. Otherwise, I'm using 1080p with a 90% resolution scale here. View distance is set to epic and I'm using the performance rendering mode as well. I'm seeing some brief stutters during gameplay and more noticeable stutter between jumping from the bus and landing. Otherwise, the game isn't dipping lower than around the mid 60s FPS wise. Around 80 to over 100 FPS is the norm throughout. That might dip lower in more intense areas of the map though. There isn't really much else to say, to be honest. The HD 5770 managed quite well here and is a surprisingly good card for Fortnite especially considering I only paid about a tenner for it. It's managing average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 90.4, 38.4 and 9 FPS respectively. We'll be doing some overclocking next, but before that we're trying out GTA 5. It's currently still one of the most popular games on Steam in terms of player count, 8 years on from its initial PC release. The HD 5770 is doing so much better than I thought I would. I'm using 1080p with normal settings and 16x anisotropic filtering here. I set the sliders to 50% as well. The 5770 is genuinely running the game quite well. I'm only seeing a few minor stars throughout the city, both during the day and at night. Nighttime tends to be more intensive performance wise because there are more shadows. But the 5770 is having no issues here at all, other than those few quite brief hitches. Around the high 30s up to the high 40s is what we're seeing FPS wise throughout the city. You'll see nearer the higher end of that range, the closer you get towards the outskirts. I'm seeing pretty much the same kind of frame rate on the highway heading out towards the desert area as well. The only stutter I'm seeing here is a brief one coming off the highway is at Sandy Shores. And it's doing great here too with around 40 FPS and no stuttering whatsoever. The 5770 then, with average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 43, 35 and 28 FPS respectively, ends up still being a great card for GTA 5. Not bad for a card 6 years older than the game itself. This particular HD 5770 is quite limited in overclocking. Some HD 5770s allow you to increase the voltage for higher clock speeds, but this one's voltage is locked though, so it's only managing 910 MHz before stability problems start coming in. The GDDR5 does better though. It's managing to hit 1335 MHz in Unigine Heaven, which is what I use while trying to get the best overclock on graphics cards. That's nearly 13% over the factory 1200 MHz so should at least make a little difference over the performance we've seen already. CSGO isn't seeing much of an improvement though, to be honest. Mirage is again running really well like before, and is seeing less frequent stuttering as well, saying that it wasn't exactly bad earlier either. I'm seeing FPS now in the mid 90s to well over 100 FPS again, which is only a slight improvement. Anubis is where I'm starting to see some problems, I think it's the memory clock being unstable here, but I'd seen a pretty major lockup at one point. Otherwise, I'm now seeing at least the mid 60s FPS wise, up to around the mid 90s. The overpass map is where I'm seeing the unstable overclock at its most obvious. Things were perfect here before, but we're getting multiple major hitches at points now. Otherwise, we're often seeing FPS from around 100 to well over that. 
the 0.1% low of only 0.8 FPS compared to 33.6 earlier on shows just how much the unstable overclock was affecting it. Otherwise, average and 1% low frame rates are 113.6 and 47.5 FPS respectively. So we are seeing an overall improvement, minus the unstable OC though. I've turned the memory overclock down for Crisis Remastered to 1320MHz now, after the problems we just had in CSGO. But I'm thinking it wasn't enough as I'm still seeing the same quite stuttery appearance throughout the test like before. To be honest, I think I'm actually seeing slightly worse performance at points. Like in dense vegetation, where FPS is now dipping to around 40 FPS, compared to the mid 40s before. I am seeing a few positives though. Big explosions aren't having as much of an effect on the frame rate now, nor are the most intense scenes. I'm seeing around the high 50s FPS in those situations compared to the low 50s earlier on in the video. We're seeing average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 76.8, 15.8 and 11.7 FPS respectively now, so I still recommend playing the original over the remaster. The game will perform and look better with the resolution and settings you would be able to use. I don't see any noticeable improvement in Fortnite either. We're seeing around the low 60s to just over 100 FPS still, and we're still getting the same occasional moments of stuttering and brief hitches at points too. The only real difference I see is, at times, there's more noticeable stuttering between jumping from the bus and landing. That's most likely down to different starting routes over the island though. We're seeing average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 87.3, 28 and 9.4 FPS respectively, and I'm thinking that stuttering is why the 1% low is lower than earlier. The 5770 was using all of its VRAM throughout, so I'm thinking reducing the textures down from high would help with performance here. As you're probably expecting now, GT5 isn't showing much, if any, improvement either. The 5770 was already running the game really well though, bar a few stars. I'm seeing much the same performance throughout the city during the night and daytime. The 5770 is managing slightly more FPS at points, but it isn't a noticeable difference, and could well just be a margin of error. I'm seeing FPS more consistently in the high 40s on the highway heading out towards Sandy Shores. I'm also not seeing the very stutter we saw coming off the highway earlier now as well. We're still seeing around 40 FPS-ish in the Sandy Shores area itself too, so nothing has changed here either. The 5770 is managing average 1% and 0.1% low frame rates of 43.5, 34.8 and 27.7 FPS respectively, so we're seeing effectively identical performance to earlier on. Personally, I'm happy with that level of performance, but if you want a closer to 60fps experience, try turning down the frame scaling option in the advanced settings menu. Something like 0.875 should make it noticeably smoother while still keeping the game looking good. So, like I said at the start, it kind of depends whether or not you would class 5770 as still relevant today. Um, Forza Horizon 5, I also tested not in this video, and that refused to start completely. So the most modern of games, the 5770 is either going to not start them at all, or it's going to run them so badly that it's you're probably going to consider whether or not you actually want to even play it at all. Saying that though, what I think makes, what I personally think makes the 5770 still relevant today, is the fact that it can run games like CSGO, GTA 5, Fortnite, and not just run them, but play run them to playable levels. And those three games are still some of the most played games at this very moment, which on their own makes this 5770 still relevant if you have one. And the fact that it only cost me a tenner is amazing. So um, for a graphics card I owned I think I had my one in 2010, maybe 2011, 2010 I think I built my first PC. So a card I had 13 years ago at the time of filming this still being perfectly usable today, it's pretty amazing. 
But yeah, that's going to be it for today. So hopefully everyone enjoyed the video. Um, I'd like, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content like this. And also let me know down in the comments below if you also have the 5770 and any fond memories you have of it. And also any particular parts you'd like to see me test in future videos. But for now, that's going to be it. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one.